Oh boy, we're going to be talking about the Beacon Studio today, and this is going to be a video that I did not expect to really do. Last time I talked about getting the Beacon, I would say, ecosystem, I talked about how in the future I would check in with you guys about this stuff or wherever for, I would say, maybe a three-month mark, two-month mark or something like that. But I wanted to go ahead and do a kind of like an update video as far as my experience with recording, I would say, several video now with the Beacon Studio versus, you know, using the Beacon mic for, I would say, live stream and using, obviously, the Beacon Mix Crate as well for live streams. So let's go ahead and talk about the Beacon Studio today. And then maybe in the future, if you guys want, I can give you guys an update on using the Beacon mic or the Beacon Mix Crate for, I would say, live streaming and just maybe the Beacon Mix Crate as far as just using it for every day. Um, if you guys are interested in that, you can subscribe to the channel or leave a like on the video, comment down below if you want an update on my thoughts and opinions on that. But when I did my initial video talking about all three of these products, I said the Beacon Studio was probably going to be the one thing that I recommend for a lot of content creators and streamers out there because this is the way to beacon if you beacon. Now, I have a lot of thoughts and concerns and just using this as far as going into editing and stuff like that and using several different microphones from the fine fine k688 and recording some stuff the ix tech microphone and now using the sure i would say mv7x as well as a what would be considered i would say an overhead microphone or wherever but i've used it um in talking videos or wherever those samson audio c2s these are really old i would say type of microphones but this is a pencil condenser microphone you can see the capsule right here and stuff in my testing and stuff i have found that the beacon studio is really annoying to use and i know this is going to be coming from a standpoint of not the everyday i would say content creator who's going to pick up the beacon studio i'm gonna go ahead and say that right now as a caveat because most people who pick up this device is not going to switch out their microphones so much but the reason why it still pertains to those types of people is because this device for one is overpriced like i mentioned in my previous video and i've been mentioning the whole entire time this device should not be 250 dollars. this at most should be 150 if that um just because of the cheapness of it, the unboxing experience, the fact that it doesn't come with XLR cable, the fact that there's no physical controls over the Beacon software or the routing or wherever controls that it allows you to have in the Beacon Mix Create or the mixings of the software and stuff. This device is so bare bones that is absolutely ridiculous that a company can get away with charging this much for a device that's not even premium. It's not like other devices where yes it might be a little bit lackluster in its build quality and stuff like that but the functionality kind of saves it in my personal opinion this is not that um let's say for instance the wooting 60 he or the 80 he people complain about the plastic build quality of that keyboard but it allows you to do what a keyboard does and it gives you the gaming competitive edge even with the plastic board and stuff like that and the features inside the software with the rapid tappy and you know just all the other stuff that that keyboard can do it's kind of justified in its price for 200 dollars. now a lot of people would be like oh that's a lot for you know plastic you know housing and all that stuff but when you look at it in comparison to the market and what it can do and stuff like that and other keyboards being around the same price or a little bit cheaper and stuff like that you can see the effectiveness of it but like I said, this is just going to make it a little bit easier for you as far as like EQ and your stuff, but you can do it with other ways and other means. Like you can EQ your microphone and stuff like that using VSTs and plugins or wherever within OBS or within your editing software or something like that. This just is like a more of a convenience thing with their software. Whereas a keyboard, if you don't have a Hall Effect keyboard, you don't have a hall effect keyboard there's nothing that you can really do to your actual existing keyboard other than replacing it with a hall effect keyboard you don't have to get the beacon studio you can get another device out there and apply vsts and plugins like the wave xlr and i understand it doesn't do the processing on board and stuff like that and you would need to get third-party vsts and stuff but with the wave xlr and what elgato is doing you can go on their website and download pre-existing, I would say, presets from other content creators or people or Elgato has worked with or something like that. And you can just slap on a waveform 
and just use that. You don't have to go in and test everything. Now, they do have presets within the Beacon software, wherever it's like three or four of them, but they're not really embarrassing in range versus what Elgato is doing as far as just having some stuff just being automatic and having those presets and setting up certain things within the Wavelink software like I've said in the previous video as far as having the background noise removal is so much better than having this noise suppression and expander you know what I'm saying and just having those capabilities within a device that's $150, you know, 140, I think refurbished is really, really good in my personal opinion. But again, you have to run the software and then the jankiness of the Elgato Wavelink software and the frustration that I have been uh, cementing and telling people about my experience with it over the years, wherever I can understand why somebody would not want to go with the Wavelink software, but there's still a I would say pros to the wavelength software even with those huge negatives in my personal opinion over a device like this with the beacon studio now another thing is is that like i mentioned before a lot of people ain't going to be switching out their microphones they but the problem is is that this device is 250 dollars. so most people are probably going to get a cheap microphone like the fine fine k688 or like a 50 60 maybe 80 dollar microphone to go with this and then in the future upgrade to like the sure mv7x the Rode pod mic um maybe even something a little bit more expensive or wherever from another i would say company out there once they get up and running or next month or once they save up or wherever and once you do that it's not going to be like a lateral movement or wherever with the wave xlr software you won't be able to use pretty much the same waveform and just have the background noise removal turned on through their VSTs. With the Beacon Studio, you're gonna have to go in and touch the waveforms, you're potentially, because the capsule is gonna be different. And you might have to do that with the Elgato Wavelink software. You might have to change one of their downloadable presets or whatever to another one, you know what I'm saying? Where they have, you know, one for dynamic microphones, one for the podcast voice kind of thing, one for uh, condenser microphones, one for specifically the, wave, the Elgato Wave XD microphone and stuff like that. Like you will have to go in potentially with the Wave XLR and change the EQ bands like you would have with the Beacon Studio. But the caveat to that is, yes, that might take some time to, you know, fundamentally figure that out. But you wouldn't have to go in on top of that and change the noise suppression, the expander, the compressor, all that stuff or wherever like you have to do in a Beacon Studio because you will automatically have that background noise removal. And from somebody who's had the Wave XLR, like I said, for years and have tested multiple different microphones and used multiple different microphones for live streaming and stuff like that. I never had to adjust and there's a little bit of adjusting you can do with the Wavelink, um, I would say background noise removal, but I never really had to adjust it from the default state with any microphone I've had from cheap microphones all the way up to my most expensive one, which is the Shure MV7X. I never had to change the background noise removal. But the, I would say the same thing or the closest thing that the Beacon Studio has is the noise suppression and expander. And you're going to have to change that per microphone because some microphones with the capsule or wherever, they're not going to be as robust. So if I have the same setting as the Shure MV7X here for a different microphone, I'm going to have to either drop it because the audio quality of the capsule is not that good. So I got to let in more noise and stuff like that and lower the threshold. But by doing that, I introduce room noise. I introduce echo. So what you have to do is get the cheaper microphones closer to your mouth. And some people don't want that as far as being right on top of the microphone with a more expensive microphone like the Shure MV7X. I don't have to have it as close, but you're still going to have to talk almost directly towards the microphone. And if you've been watching me, I've been turning my head a little bit more, whereas the Wave XLR just alone with a cheaper microphone, I've had the microphone further away from me because I can do that not only with the same waveform, again, I'm running into Beacon Studio as I would run on the Wave XLR, but because of that background noise removal and how it detects my voice, I don't have to ch change anything. And again, I can have the microphone further away from me and it's gonna sound the same as if I had it closer to me with the Beacon Studio, it's gonna sound the same. And I will go ahead and play a clip between me using the Fine Fine K688 with the Beacon Studio 
and I was in there recording a little snippet or wherever and testing it. And then me using the Fine Fine K688 with the Wave XLR with the same EQ band. But the only difference is I'm not running a compressor and I'm using a background noise removal. So the only difference between the Beacon Studio and the Wave XLR, again, the Beacon Studio does not have a background noise removal, but I am running a compressor and I'm running noise suppression and stuff like that to the point to where it's not having any kind of audio degradation or wherever. So you're hearing the best setting for the Fine Fine K688 and you've been listening to the Shure MV7X. So you're gonna be able to tell the difference in quality of the capsule and type of microphone I'm using but when I use the Wave XLR and I use those settings that I talked about, it sounds like a more professional microphone. It sounds better. So for the Fine Fine K688, the dB is set to about 45. The noise suppression is, uh, the amount is set to 80. The sensitivity is set to 75. The expander is set to 50 and the expand amount is set to 33%. And the compressor is set to 25 dB threshold with the compressed amount of 33% with the makeup gain around five dB. And I'm hitting around, at least on the, the uh, I would say the compressor tab, I'm hitting around between four and six, depending on the reflection of my voice as far as going up and down. And then the gain output is set to the default thing or wherever that they had as far as the extra oomph behind the dB. And that's 1.8. 1, 1. So this is where we're going up as far as the microphone. And I'm consistently peaking at least on the, I would say, microphone setup tab or wherever, the ebb and flow where it tells you, you know, where your peak is at and your speaking area and is seeing if you're getting into the peaking. I'm sitting around 13 dB, which I would say for YouTube, you're going to want to be around, at least from my understanding, especially working with DaVinci Resolve and other programs, to get your audio of your voice to sound good without the background music and all that stuff you want your voice to sit around 14 db if you're like me and you pre-ordered the sony zv e10 mark ii uh, mine came in today and i have some accessories that i want to talk to you guys about but first let's do an unboxing and first initial impressions of this camera and i don't know why it came in a bigger box than uh, necessary but uh thankfully you know what i'm saying the box doesn't look damaged or anything like that so we might be in luck. Just letting you guys know, I am paying monthly for this camera. I'm doing the Affirm thing through the Sony's website so I can get that warranty, as well as not getting the kit lens. I just got the body because I do own the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I, which you're seeing right now. I also own the Sony ZV-1 Mark I for my top down, so it's just a point and shoot version. And I also use a Sony Alpha 6100 as my webcam for streaming over on Kick. But with that being said, I didn't need the kit lens, even though, yes, it's upgraded and everything like that. But I have lenses that are already perfect and I wanted to save a little bit of money. Yes, it's arguably like a little bit of money, but in the grand scheme of things, I'm probably never going to use the kit lens. Um, so I'm going to save money wherever I can, because, again, I'm a budget content creator. I'm not approaching this from doing, you know, documentaries, shooting gym videos, advertisements, all that stuff where a lot of and your main audio, wherever for your mixing profiles or wherever. Again, if you go into personal mix and you turn it on and you're trying to listen to the Beacon Studio with your headphones, it sounds god awful. It's just like the Beacon mic. Even if you're using wired headphones or wireless headphones, listening to the Beacon Studio and the Beacon mic is an awful representation and it's not an accurate representation to what you're actually recording the quality of the audio and that's why when i live stream i always have to ask people it does my microphone sound good does it sound good i, I would sit there and open up my live stream while i'm live streaming and listen to it to make sure that the microphones sound good because i can't turn on the personal mix because the audio quality is worse with the beacon studio listening into my headphones then the beacon mic and my beacon mic came in and used and i was thinking that's the probably the reason why but even the beacon mic listening to it through the headphones or wherever or even the personal mix option with inside the beacon software they all sound terrible and i don't know why so many people are saying that is great to listen to the audio wherever directly into the headphones versus the wave xlr because the wave xlr always gave me an accurate accurate representation of how my audio was going to sound whether i was live streaming or recording the, a video the beacon mix in uh the beacon software with the beacon studio or the beacon mic is never an accurate representation 
to when I'm hearing my ears. And when I'm hearing my ears is like, I have no EQs going, no noise suppression, no expander, no compressor, anything like that. It sounds like flat out raw audio. It doesn't sound like the EQ'd audio that's going to be pushed out through OBS. And I don't know if that maybe it's because I have an audio setting in OBS and that's why the stuff sounds better, but it just sounds like shit in, in my personal opinion, just gonna be completely honest. It sounds like shit. So I don't know, maybe it's something that I have set in the software, like I said, and I'm listening back to my headphones and maybe somebody else has, you know, a setting that I need to adjust or turn on or something like that within the software. Maybe somebody can let me know in the comments. So I would encourage you to go back and listen to that audio comparison or wherever that I just did. And if you listen very closely, you can hear the Beacon Studio sounds a little bit more crystal clear as far as presence goes. But if you listen to it with headphones, you're going to hear what I'm talking about as far as the room presence, you're going to hear a little bit more echo and stuff like that. It's not going to be as bad as if you had everything turned off as far as the room echo goes. But with the Wave XLR, you're not hearing that that presence and even if i wanted to turn up the exciter because that's what allows that presence to be a little bit more crystal clear as far as the audio and your voice goes or wherever inside of the beacon studio you can do that with a third-party plugin or wherever or even just adjusting the eq band or wherever within the elgato preset or wherever that you can download from their marketplace and even doing that, that background noise removal is going to get rid of that echo wherever somewhat, depending on how high you're turning that exciter up or whatever for that crystal clear, I would say audio. And on top of that, like I've said before, in the Beacon, uh, I would say ecosystem roundup video that I did, again, I'll leave it linked in the description. I did a audio test of an overhead shotgun microphone that I used with the Fine Fine SC3 audio mixer with the same EQs and the background noise removal, I can use that to just record a microphone out of shot. Yes, it's kind of like echoey or wherever, but it's still somewhat of a usable audio and no way in hell you can do that with the Beacon Studio because they have a noise suppression instead of a background noise removal and it doesn't really isolate your voice. So you're going to have to change some settings and stuff like that. And like I said, not everybody wants a microphone in the shot or not everybody wants to sit there with their lips on top of the microphone and get really close to get that proximity effect so they can turn down the exciter and not really get that echo and stuff like that. Not everybody wants to talk into the microphone like this for a video. So in my personal opinion, like I said before, you're going to have to, with the Beacon Studio, get a microphone that's, like I said, between 100 to $200 just because of the capsule and how the build quality of the microphone goes and everything. But the problem with that is that even with the Fine Fine K688 in that previous audio clip that you heard, I was able to run multiple in multiple videos. You can't hear it because I was able to run a portable air AC unit or wherever in my room because I've talked about it multiple times before on the channel that this room can get over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is kind of warm or wherever up to 90 before I've hit that several times. And with this AC unit and recording videos and how long it takes and stuff like that with content creation, streaming, all that stuff, I can have that running with the Wave XLR and the background noise removal and a simple EQ band like I keep talking about and not pick up any of that, whether it's an arms and a half length away from me like it is right now, or I'm at my streaming desk or wherever streaming and stuff like that and I have it going, nobody can tell that I even have that going. As well as the ease of use with the software, not having any issues when um, I've used the eMeet S800. I recently did a review on that. That is a 4K30 webcam for $150, but at the launch price, it was $100. So it was very interesting to me but the image quality just coming straight out of the box was not really good. And even though you could critique the webcam in their software to make it to look the best, it was very hard to make sure that your webcam was in 4K30, as well as some of the other, I would say, quality of life improvements that that software needed to be ready for, I would say, commercial use or personal use. And I have talked to the company, they're making changes and stuff for that webcam and everything. For 288, I'll have it linked in the Amazon store page down in the description to all the accessories for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark II that I covered in a previous video. I'll have those videos at the end of the video as well as in the description. So definitely check them out if you're looking for tips and help with your Sony ZV-E10 Mark II. And again, I used to use this as my stream camera. I use this for photo taking wherever for my thumbnails, for my videos. But like I said, with this setup over here for the Sony ZV-E10 Mark I with the 16 millimeter lens on it from Sigma, just fundamentally, 
from a statistical standpoint and a factual standpoint, a background noise removal is going to be way better than a noise suppression. And like I said, in those previous videos, I've had my AC unit going. And again, in this type of video, in this type of environment, if I back up this further far away or wherever from the, I would say the microphone and turn on my AC unit, you can probably hear my AC unit or something like that. Or you can probably hear the actual, I would say microphone struggling or wherever to get rid of that background noise that is happening right now from this distance. But from this distance, I had microphones before pushed a little further away from me and talk wherever and not have any audio problems or issues. And this is what I'm talking about. So to me, having a noise suppression versus a noise background noise removal or whatever is not the same. It is it is not created equal. And like I said, some people might like the boost in clarity as far as your voice and stuff goes with this kind of setup through the Beacon software. But in my personal opinion, when it comes to live streaming, this might be okay. You know what I'm saying? This might be somewhat acceptable. But when you're trying to make high quality or decent videos wherever to capture your audience's attention and stuff having the microphone super close to you and dealing with plosives or wherever even on somewhat if a decent microphone that's supposed to be good with plosives and everything and having to run certain settings within the beacon studio again i'm still dialing it in but having that or wherever and not being able to have stuff in your background even though they say you can have the stuff in the background running or whatever you again you're gonna have to get closer and the closer you get to a dynamic microphone or really any microphone you're gonna start introducing a lot of the other i would say audio problems like plosives or just the proximity effect or whatever being too overbearing or something like that and like i said this is coming from somebody who again doesn't really like having microphones in a shot and if i do i don't want them all up in my mouth or grill or wherever while talking to my audience and i have experienced that with the wave xlr that is just vastly superior just due to the simple fact of noise suppression versus background noise removal that is just better because the closer you get to the microphone when you have noise suppression the better the audio quality is going to be versus background noise removal is just hey at a certain volume these noises are going to be cut out at a certain frequency ranges and stuff that are typically found in a room setting or wherever as far as like the ambiency of a room then the echoiness all that stuff a background noise removal targets those specific frequencies and gets rid of them a background suppression is going to look for those frequencies and actively try to suppress them or wherever whereas the background noise removal is just a blanket one so you can get closer to the microphone or get further away and that's perfectly fine with a background suppression you're going to have to get closer to the microphone so the microphone can isolate your voice a little bit easier and better and suppress those frequencies or those things that's why they have the snapshot that's why they have certain frequency ranges it can look for or wherever that's why the expander is there and you adjust the expander amount and all that stuff and like i said when you're in a room that doesn't really have that like maybe has bare walls and stuff doesn't really have furniture or bare minimum has carpeted floors if you don't have carpeted floors i do but when you have like bare walls and stuff like that and depending on your proximity to the bare walls and maybe your monitor is right there so your voice is reflecting off the monitor all that stuff you're gonna have to get super close to your microphone and like i said with certain microphones the plosives are going to be really, really bad, and it's going to be unbearable for people to watch your YouTube videos. Again, people might be more forgiving on a live stream with it or wherever. And I feel like that's why the Beacon mic is a little bit better because you're not really getting that many plosives or really dealing with that. Because again, like I said in the previous video, the Beacon mic is not a true dynamic microphone. So that's why the plosives are not as bad. But when you get a dynamic microphone like the Shure MV7X, which is a entry level premium microphone like i keep saying you're going to start experiencing the plosives and you heard it throughout the video 
again, when I get closer to the microphone or I turn my mouth over towards it or something like that, you hear the plosives. So you have to turn your mouth away from the microphone and let it have an aside address to your voice. But once you do that, and like I said, you don't have a background noise removal and you have a noise suppression. If you have things going on in your room, I can't express this enough and people are probably sick of it at this point. But when you have outside stuff in your room or wherever that's making noise, like your computer fans, because your, your microphone's closer to your computer than mine is right now, you have the AC unit going or wherever, you have your keyboard and you're typing on a desk and stuff, what you're hearing right now, all that stuff, and I'm typing and I'm doing this or wherever, you're not gonna hear that with a background noise removal. It's just, just allow us to have the option to be able to have the settings that we want as content creators, have the accessibility to those or access to those options because limiting the options and then charging $250 or $200 plus for your products and they're supposed to be on a premium level, this is not a premium experience. This is not a premium user experience. So alienating and cutting off the access to people being able to have access to those third party plugins and being able to introduce them into your software is a big no-no. It's a big misstep. It's something that needs to be corrected ASAP, in my personal opinion, if you want to justify charging as much as you are for your products. Not to mention not having physical controls on the device itself, like the Beacon Mix Create, built into the Beacon Studio, the cheapness and feeling of the device, my thoughts and opinions still stands. There's not enough here to charge a $250. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, 150, I could see that. But in my personal opinion, my view of the Beacon Studio, as far as from a price to performance standpoint, it has gone down. I would pay $100, maybe max to $120. That's as much as I would pay for this device, in my personal opinion. And again, this is somebody who sucks at EQing audio. I'm not an audio engineer. I've just been doing this long enough to know, listening to audio, that this ain't, this ain't it, Chief. <laughs> this ain't it, in my personal opinion. With that being said, this video is way longer than I thought it would be. Hopefully, you guys continue to have a squid task today. I will see you guys in the next one. Um, if Again, if you want to hear... And right now, you can probably hear my son crying in the hallway um, a little bit. If you listen to it, you can probably hear him crawl, crying in the hallway. Background noise removal, that wouldn't happen. I'm telling you right now. That, you would not be able to hear that. With that being said, um, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Y'all take care. Have a squid-tastic day. God bless you and yours. And deuces. I'm going to go see what's going on with him. Yeah, you could probably hear that. Background noise removal, you wouldn't hear that.